Hello everybody and welcome to Kids Craft Camp. I'm Leah Griffith and we are so grateful that our craft camp is sponsored by Canon so that we can share this out to everybody. This is something that you can share with your friends. They can make it your siblings. Um, we just want you to get out there and craft because there's so much fun to be had when you make things with paper. And I'll have to say that was my favorite toy when I was a kid is I made everything from paper. I made paper dolls and then I would make paper houses to house them in. So when I decided to use these adorable illustrations that one of our designers, Krista, designed for us and make them into a diorama, it kind of reminded me of those days when I used to make paper dolls. So here we are, look at this, how fun is this? The lid becomes, you can actually use this if you want to. You can kind of set it in there. All your dinosaurs can kind of be, you know, staged inside the box lid or inside, either way. And then when you're done, you just flip it all over and close your lid. And there you have it. So today we're going to assemble all of this. I think that you all have your links for the pages that you can print. And we noted that some of them are going to be printed on a cardstock and some will be printed on a label paper. If you don't have a label paper, that's okay. The cardstock I used was this double-sided matte paper from Canon and I used this printer to print it on and it's this really wonderful, let's see, it's in here somewhere. Oh, here we are. Okay, oh, here we are. <laughs> Too many things. Okay, so it's this really nice thick paper and it has just really great color on it. So that's what I printed all of my parts on for the cardstock. So once you have these printed, we're gonna start with the cardstock and then you can, we're gonna finish up with the label paper. So once you have all of these printed, if you had time last night, um, if not, you can always come back and watch this once you've cut all these out. You need to go through and cut all of the pages. So we have, this is the um, land and this is a volcano. We have a few clouds. We have some different parts and pieces to make the scenery. And then we have the dinosaurs themselves. The dinosaurs are a little bit trickier to cut. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how I like to cut this sort of thing. Cause it takes a bit of time and you wanna be patient with yourself. Some of these other parts, they it's okay if you don't quite hit the line on your cutting, but with the dinosaurs you'll wanna do as close as possible. So the trick that I like to use is I'll go ahead and cut all the way around my dinosaur, leaving just a bit of white. And that way I don't have the whole page in the way when I'm cutting. So remember, if you have any questions, just type them into the comments. And we have somebody here that will shout them out to me so I can answer all your questions today. Since this is live, this is the fun of life. Have one question so yes. Far. So Liz is asking, is the printer wireless? Uh, the printer is wireless, yes, it is. Which is really awesome. Okay, so then when I go in and cut, I, I can just tip my scissors just a little bit so I can see the edge. And I don't want any white to show. I really do want to cut as close to the white as possible, but I want to you know, cut onto the orange for this one. So you can cut this direction and then sometimes I find that if I'm cutting something I might even want to cut the other direction if I need to see see what I'm saying sometimes I cut clockwise and sometimes I cl cut counterclockwise so you just want to be patient with yourself and very carefully cut all the little parts and pieces because it will be worth it all right I have all of these cut out but the first thing we're going to do is decorate our box so this box I used was actually a shoe box that I had in my closet and it had some words on it. So that's why I really wanted to get labels to cover up the words and just to make it really pretty. Um, so I included a bunch of labels for you guys so you can decorate your box or you can also use any kind of craft paper or scrap paper, or anything else that you know your parent might have in their craft room. So this box, I actually purchased this one and this is um, just a craft box. I got it online. We have a link if you want to see this box. It's, a, it's not super, super straight, which kind of bugs me. I want it to be straighter, but it's okay. Um, so it's all brown, which I love that it's brown. So the first thing we're wanting to do is make the back of the box blue and then 
the sides blue, the top blue, and then green on the bottom. And if you don't have craft paper that you can use, we also made some stickers for you that you, or you could just use regular paper if you want to use all that ink and cut them out to fit. But my favorite method, so we have one in blue and we have one in green, so you can use those if you need to. And a quick question. Yes. Lindsay's asking, would you use a detail knife? You can use a detail knife if you're old enough. Um, I would say that would be something you need to make sure your parent is okay you use a detail knife because you can cut yourself. So we are trying to be super careful. If you're younger and you, you know, this is a really hard thing for you to cut, this would be a great time to ask an older sibling or maybe your parent to craft with you. You can cut out all of the scenery and maybe they can help you with the dinosaurs. So it's a fun group project. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put, Blue up here, blue in the back. So the way that I want to measure it is I'll set my box and I don't want to make it exactly, I'm trying to see here how I can show you what I'm doing. It's a little tricky. I want to make the paper a little bit smaller than the box. Otherwise, um, it will be too tight. So I have a pencil and I'm just going to use the box to measure, but I'm offsetting it just a bit and then I'll use my pencil to mark exactly where that goes. And then I'll just use my scissors and cut that piece of paper. This is a piece of cardstock. You can use any kind of paper. And I just picked this really light blue color. So I should have had these all pre-cut for you guys, but you can cut along with me. Then, Make sure it fits. If it's a little bit tight, this one's a little tight, I'll go ahead and pull it out and cut just a bit off. I think the fun thing about this project too is once you make this dinorama that's already kind of pre-designed for you, it will get your creativity going so that you can make uh, your own, um, you know, from your own drawings and maybe some things that you find. Okay, it fits really nicely and it's actually not even gonna pop out, but I will add some glue. My favorite glue, or my favorite tape, I guess, is this actually this Scotch Permanent, and it's a, it's a roll tape, and it just works so well. Can you see this on the overhead, Matthew? Oops. So all you do is you just roll it right along the edge. You just want enough so that it doesn't pop out of your box. And then I'll place that back in the box and press it down. Okay, so there's the front. I'll get another piece of paper for the bottom. Now is a really great time for questions while I'm assembling this. No questions right now. Okay, I think that this is um, this is a fun project for all ages. Even if you make it, if you're an older, older um, kid and you wanna make it for maybe your sibling or as a gift. All right, I'm just kind of offsetting a little bit so it's not too big. Marking it and cutting it out. Another thing you could do if you don't want to, you know, use cardstock, you could also use some craft paint and paint inside your box. That would be a really fun activity to do to mix it up a bit. There's really no limit. Okay, I'm gonna see if it's too big. It actually fits perfectly. It fits so well that I probably don't even need tape in there. But I'm going to do it anyway, just to make sure it doesn't come out. Also, this is a great time if you want to write in the comments if you have some ideas of things that you want to make here in Craft Camp. Um, I'm always interested in hearing what you guys want to make and what you're, you're thinking. We had some great comments last week of some ideas, maybe some flower garland, some room decorations. I thought those were all really fun. Okay, that's in, and then we'll make two sides. Looks like we almost have enough paper. Yes, I have one more page. Uh, we do have a suggestion. Yes. Yes. 
what kind of Christmas decor. So you guys have any um, ideas on what kind of Christmas decor? Since I have two side panels, I can actually use this one as a pattern to cut another one. It would be fun to do. I mean, dioramas, you can make them all different types. You can make a Christmas diorama. It'd be so cute. Put it on your mantle. Maybe with some little woodland creatures and some owls in the trees. We do have a big Algeria. Oh, hello. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you like our kids' crafts too. All right. So I have two pieces and we're going to assume they fit and just place them in. And there we go. So we're already building the scene. And then the last piece that we'll put inside the box is the green for the ground. And over. Since this box isn't really quite straight, it's a little, it's a little lumpy. I think that was one reason why I did like uh, the shoe box better, fit a little bit better. See, this one's a bit long, but that's okay. I just take my scissors and cut it off. Did you guys see the cute animation uh, that Matthew did before the video started? Of the Dinosaurs walking back and forth. If not, you might have to play that again, Matthew. <laughs> okay, the green, I also just have some cardstock, but again, you can use this paper that um, we offered that you can print. And we're going to measure. Oh, we have another suggestion. Yes, I want to hear it. Um, I love that idea. I actually had puppets as an idea um, when I was drafting this whole plan, so maybe that should be some of something we look at doing next. Okay, so that works. Let's see which side looks better. I think that side looks better. This tape is so easy to work with. Okay. So there's the inside of the box. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you want everything blue on the top and green on the bottom. And then the next thing, what we'll want to do is put in, this would be, what is this thing called? This is a, um, Exploding mountain. Volcano. volcano, thank you. <laughs> Mind blank. Okay, volcano. So same thing. We're just going to, um, oh, no, actually that's not true because I did this one a little different. You can tape it straight to the back if you want to, but the way that I did it here was I actually used these little pop dot adhesives. So I had a thought on this one too. If you don't have these little pop, this is for card making when, they, when you want to do, um, different layers at different heights. So, you know, your pair might have some of these in their craft room, but if you don't have these, what you can do is just take a piece of cardboard, you know, off of the Amazon box flap, cut that out and just cut yourself little squares and then use this tape on both sides and that will give you a nice little riser. So I'm going to put a few of these on the back of my volcano. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, when you're, we're doing live video, your mind just kind of goes flat line. You forget things, silly things, like volcano. Okay, I've put three little dots, two on the bottom, one on the top, and I'll place that. I'll lay it right at the bottom of the box so it touches the green. And then this is my volcano cloud. This one I want flat. So I'll just put a few of these bits of stick on it and slide it back there. And you can see it's kind of a blue on blue, so it doesn't show a lot, which I like because then we have clouds that are white. And you just, I'm putting those flat, I'm not putting the uh, risers on the clouds. 
this box is smaller. The fun thing about designing this project was trying to make for sure that it would work for any size box. So sometimes you may not need all the clouds because this box is a lot narrower than this box. So I may not be able to fit them all in there and that's okay. I'll just put three in today instead of four. So um, then I had another idea which was how about articulated paper dolls? Oh my goodness, okay. Paper, you know, you're talking to the right person because paper dolls are like my favorite thing ever. So I want you to tell everybody what does articulated mean because I want to know too. What does that mean? What do you mean by that? I love it. And um, what does kind of relate to your mind? Oh, thank you, Liz. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. It's all good. Okay, so now the next step that we're going to do is put in these little mountains. So again, I made them so you could make them as wide as, or as narrow as needed. So wider box, narrower box. This is a very narrow box and I probably need to cut some of the ends off because I think it's actually too wide. No problem, I'm just going to trim it down Go ahead and just cut the tip of that off. See, I'll show you what I did here. So I trimmed it like this. Doot, doot. Then these little white pieces are actually tabs. Last week when we were doing some folding, I was showing you how you can take your ruler and place it right on the line that you want to fold and then use that as an edge and then you can fold it back the other way. It's a really nice way to get some flat, straight folds. Okay, do we know what articulated paper dolls means yet? Not yet. Should we Google that? Uh, absolutely. Anything articulated is a good thing. The thing I'm noticing too about this box, the paper doesn't stick quite as well on the edges as it does on this one because I think there's a finish on it. So you can use another type of um, uh, tape that you like. Are, it's glue dots. Glue dots work really well or you can have um, maybe your, your parent help you with some hot glue and get that all in place. Just be careful not to put too much because it will make it bumpy. The hot glue you have to do pretty thin. Okay. Um, all right, so articulated paper dolls are paper dolls that glue, oh, have joints? Yes, okay, yes. I have to turn it this way so I can do it and then I'll show you guys what I'm doing. So I folded the tabs and then I'm going to put some of the tape on both sides and then I'll place it up against the sidewall and the floor of the box. It's probably best if I use a piece of scrap paper and not just roll the tape. I'm gonna use this as a scrap paper and not just roll the tape on my table because I don't want my table sticky. So I'll just roll it that way. I love, I love articulated paper dolls. Now that I know what it means. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to place it. And I want it about an inch from the back. I don't want it too far forward because we, we want to keep layering and we want to have room for the dinosaurs to move back and forth. So it looks something like that. Then we have our other side here and the, the, the one that will go in front will be the one with the trees. Do the same thing. I, I will have to cut this one down quite a bit, but I'll fold it first. So do you want your paper dolls to have changes of clothing or is it okay that they just have one outfit? When I was um, making my own paper dolls when I was a little kid, I, it used to drive me crazy that they only had one side. They only had a front side and then the back side was white. So that's why I started drawing my own because then I could have fronts and backs to my paper dolls. Okay, 
So I'm gonna measure it first, and it looks like it's really quite long. I think I'll go ahead and cut this whole end off right here. And notice how on the point, or on, on the end, I'm actually pointing it, so that way the white doesn't show. It's just one of those little things. It doesn't have to, but it just makes it prettier. Okay. And then I'll do the same thing, but I'll bring it up just a little bit. And this is where this flap works well because you can use the flap to kind of space your different layers as you put them in. So there's our second one. Okay, now we're going to put the trees in. I think since there's a lot going on here. I'll go ahead and cut them first. So I think I'll cut this one down. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this last little bit off. Jeanette when you, says, uh, sorry, Jeanette's saying, my dolls have some changes of clothes, but let imagination be your guide. I love that, thank you. <laughs> I, I'm kind of, yeah. I like changes of clothes, but sometimes I'll just have to noodle on that one for a little bit. All right, I'm gonna cut this one down too. One of the things I was going to say when I was cutting these trees, what I found worked best because this gets really thin and you don't want your tree to get bent, at least the, you know, the trunk of your tree. Cut everything out first, like cut the base, cut around this, cut all these first and then go in and cut this last. And if it happens to bend, just cut a little strip of paper and glue it on the back, or you could even use a little piece of wire as well. All right. Liz says that she had a friend that made food, chairs, tables, everything out of paper. She was so talented. I think she could have played with Leah for hours. <laughs> we would have been best friends. <laughs> we would have. I love that. Yeah, I remember making, I wish I had pictures of it. You know, back, back in those days, we didn't have phone cameras, so we didn't get to document everything. But I remember making a car out of cardboard, like cardboard boxes, and it was pretty detailed, if I remember right. And it was pretty funny. So these two, you can layer them whichever direction you want. It doesn't matter which side you put on first. Um, All right. This is a great, you know, rather than throwing away your shoe boxes, keep them and make really great toys out of them. All right, I'm gonna put this one second, now that I said that, because I'm going to layer, 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 instead of layer, 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 layer. So again, doesn't matter, but that's what I'm gonna do. I love this method of folding using this ruler. And that's a great time for anybody have any fun craft tips or tricks you want to share. Go ahead and type them in the comments. Okay, this one first. I have to tip my box up to see it. Jeanette's saying, I'm left handed and work upside down, so my mother doesn't allow me to use scissors. I cut a deal with my PR. I drew the dolls in the clothes. She cut them out for the price of a set for her as well. Aw, that's awesome. So, I am left-handed and I don't, I, you know, we didn't have left-handed scissors when I was young and I really wanted to use scissors so I learned how to use them. And now I cut with my right hand always. 
I don't, if I had a pair of left-handed scissors, I'm not sure if I would know what to do with them. I think we're very adaptable creatures. Okay, so here's the last layer. And this is looking so cute. Look at this, I love it. Look at these little trees, they kind of bounce in the wind. All right, then the last piece that we're going to use for our scenery are these um, pieces of grass. And again, this is plenty long. I, I, I had to print two. If you have a bigger box, you'll need two, again, to make the width. But this box is small enough that I only need one. And the way that I will do this one is I'll fold it and tuck it into this side and then I'll fold and tuck it into the other side. And then I'm just gonna use a scotch tape on the edge. Okay, so that's in place. I love scotch tape. This box does not like things to stick to it. It's extremely varnished, which is weird because it's craft. So this is not really sticking. I'll have to go back and hot glue this, but you get the idea, right? So there's the front. That way you have all these different little layers for your dinosaurs to pop into. Where's one of my dinosaurs? Here we are. They kind of crashed here. So they can go into any of these layers and once you have that finished, I'm not going to do it today, but you, you guys can do it by yourself because this is just a fun time to get super creative. I went ahead and put the green on the base. So here we go. So I would put the green here. Then I gave you guys all of these labels. You can print as many as you want to. And again, if you don't have label, you can use regular paper. And they're tall enough that you can almost probably use them for any size of, of lip of the lids. These are kind of a smaller lip, so I would cut these a lot shorter. You can use your ruler again and mark them and then cut them out by hand. I put the green on the bottom and then I put the grass all the way on the outside and I put the grass all the way on the inside. That's something you can have a lot of fun with. Then we also have these stickers where I, I designed this to put onto the top of the box so that, you know, if it had a logo or a brand on it, it would cover it up. I love using pinking shears. You, this is actually for sewing, but you can also find some craft pinking shears that are smaller, um, that are great for paper. And I love using pinking shears because it gives this really pretty decorative edge. So you can cut that out. We also have, um, the word Dinorama you could use. And I'll show you the last one. Here's another sheet of labels, all kinds of little dots and some prints. And you can see how I used different, used them in different ways to cover up all the text on this box. So I'm trying to give you as much as I can so you can make this, <laughs> this box really pretty. And you can save it. I'll just go ahead and finish cutting this one out. All right, so that I would put right here. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to make the dinosaurs. They're really, really simple. Once you have them cut out, it's, this is kind of going back to my childhood where I would get very frustrated that my paper dolls only had one side and I wanted these dinosaurs to be two-sided. So I made them two-sided for you. You'll take your ruler and place it right on the edge there and fold it. This is so simple. So the hardest part is really cutting, cutting them out. Fold it that way. Uh, and then I'm just gonna put the tape on his head and then the tail. And I would, and just one side, you don't need to do both sides. Then you're going to, do you have an overhead here, Matthew? 
Then you're just gonna line it up. You can see how you can line it up so as little white as possible shows and then pinch it together. Then you can go ahead and take your scissors if you want to and just trim off the white. You don't have to, it's just an idea. Another thought that I had is if you wanted to add a little bit of weight to the bottom of the dinosaur so it doesn't tip over quite as easy, you could glue a rock inside of there. You could put you know, a heavy paper clip so that it won't tip over. Also, I found that if I kind of bend this, almost put a crease in the bottom, it tends to stand up much better. All right, so there's one. Let's make all five. And then you guys can ask any last questions before we finish up this adorable dinorama. Brittany, you can make up a question. Oh, I could. Because I know you're going to go home and make this. That's right, I am. <laughs> Cute. Um, well, I had to look up the name of the different dinosaurs. Um, do you know the name of all the dinosaurs that you're making? I don't, but I did put them on the bottom. <laughs> okay, this is this is Ty Tyrannosaurus Rex, which I think that's a pretty common one. I did put the, the name of the dinosaurs on the bottom, so I would remember. You know, when I was a kid, dinosaurs were not a big thing. Um, and then I had a daughter, so she wasn't really into dinosaurs. So I didn't learn my dinosaur names. <laughs> All right, same thing. I just put the tape right on the top and on its tail. And then just line it up like this. I'll kind of pop that bottom. And there you go. I love these. They're so cute. I think this would be a really great gift to make for a small child for them to play with. I think they would find it very delightful. I'm kind of making a mess here. This is how I this is how I cook too. And I craft this way. some tape on the tail, tape on the head, and his little horn, and maybe a bit on his back. And then just kind of, whoops. Okay, I didn't get it quite lined up, so I'll pull it apart. I'm gonna line up the, the horns first, because that's the trickiest part. Okay. Dinosaur number three. All right, I'm, I'm gonna go start designing some paper dolls with movable arms and legs and possible costumes. We'll see. Different outfits. So make sure if you if you guys have not watched last, well, I was gonna say last month, but it was actually two weeks ago. We also did some really cute 3D houses that are made from paper and you just cut them and score them and fold them. And they're really adorable to use as decoration or to play with them. All right, last dinosaur. This is probably my favorite. I think this one is kind of reminds me of a gentle giant. Do you know how to say this one? Oh, that's a uh, bronchiosaurus. Yay! <laughs> I had to look it up. Did you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I call that one a giraffe. The other one was a rhinoceros. <laughs> Yes, yeah. I um, also wanted to mention on our site, we have uh, quite a few different things made from this dinosaur set. So, you know, I think initially Krista designed these for gift wrap and cards, and then we had a whole dinosaur party. So, you know, we keep using the same illustrations because they're so cute and they're just need to be 
used. There they are, all five. And here's their little seam. This one I whipped together. This one's a little nicer, but they both look pretty good. So go and make your little dinosaur diorama or dinorama. And we'll see you guys. We're gonna have our next kids craft camp. I'm looking up here because this is the board on September 18. Um, so we're gonna do something really fun. It might be paper dolls. Come and see, come find out. We're gonna do something really fun um, using this beautiful Canon printer. And again, we thank Canon for sponsoring us. We'll see you next time.